Okay, in a recent video I posted this circuit. It was not a narrated video and uh, I did say I would post a follow-up, so that's what I'm doing here. And this circuit is a pulse width modulation circuit to control the speed of the motor by changing the duty cycle. It doesn't significantly change the frequency of the pulse width modulated output, but it changes the duty cycle. So now at the moment, what I've done is I've chosen a deliberately large value for the capacitor to slow down the pulse width modulation so we can easily see it when it's graphed. But in reality, if you were using this, you'd actually want the pulse width modulated signal to be somewhere within the range of about 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. So you'd, you'd need to use a much smaller value for the capacitor, something like 0.1 microfarad. Anyway, let's just quickly uh, see this working. You can see the motor's running and then you see it's slowing down. So that's when the output is low and then it then when it goes high, the, the motor starts. Now, as I say, in reality, that motor would be spinning more or less at constant speed all the time because the pulse width modulated signal would be um, uh, modulating so quickly. Let's just uh, add a probe to the output pin three is the output of the um, timer. So hopefully you can see, in fact, let's um, pause automatically as well. Hopefully you can see that the output is going high and then goes low and then goes high with roughly equal mark space. And now mark is the output high and the space is the output low. So that's what we want. If we've got the, this potentiometer set at 50% or approximately 50%, you'd expect the mark and the space to be in equal proportions. They won't actually be exactly equal. Now, the reason for that is, let's just have a look at this potentiometer. So the potentiometer is a 50K. Now, if it's 50K and if you've got it set halfway, then effectively what you've got is a 25K and a 25K. You've got like this. Just imagine that those are the two sides of, uh, and that's the wiper that goes in the middle of the potentiometer. But um, the reason for the mark and space not being exactly equal is to charge the capacitor. You've got to charge the capacitor through the 1K plus the 25K, in other words, 26K. But to discharge the capacitor through the discharge pin, pin 7, you only have to discharge it through um, R3 here. So hopefully you can see that um, 26K is greater than 25K, so it's going to be slightly longer to charge than it will be to discharge. Now, you might be tempted just to reduce this. I wouldn't reduce it anything below 1K. Um, the 1K is protection for the open collector on the discharge pin. So if I just run the simulation again, and now I have more uh, a greater value on the on this side the charging uh, resistor if we imagine this is a charging resistor and it takes longer to charge up let's uh, allow this to run shall we so it's, it's going to be a relatively long time to charge so a long mark short space long mark short space like that. If on the other hand you have most of the resistance for discharging and less of the resistance for charging with a smaller value resistance on this side for the charging then you're going to have a small mark and a longer space. So that's the space there. Okay. Now, maybe to make it a little bit clearer, let's just uh, reduce this value. So let's go for 10 microfarads. And let's um, clear the results. So hopefully there, you can see it quite clearly now. We've got a quite a short mark and a relatively long space. Let's go to 50-50. Approximately equal. And of course, the motor is going a little bit faster now. Now, 
now we've increased the resistance for charging so we've got a slower uh, charge or a longer charge time so a longer on time and a shorter um, off time or a shorter space now as I say if you're actually doing this in your real circuit you'll be using an even lower value unfortunately due to the limitations of circuit wizard uh, it does not simulate very well with those sorts of times yes I know that you can go on properties and you can change the uh, this axis here but I've never really actually had much luck with uh, getting it to do anything uh, it's not too bad I suppose but um, yeah for, for simulations at least at the start I think it's easier if you choose bigger values just so you can see that you're getting that you're able to change the rate the proportions between the uh, the charging and discharging um, let's just change that back to something a little bit higher so let's say 20 microfarads and uh, let's see that run now we need to change that of course Let's change that to say um, one second. Oh, one second. Okay, so there's our mark, there's our space. And we can add another probe. Should be able to, this time around, you should be able to see the charging of the capacitor. Now, notice that the charging of the capacitor started at 4 volts because, of course, at 4 volts, which is one third of the supply voltage, um, triggering happened, so the timing cycle started. And then within, when the uh, voltage of the capacitor reached two thirds of the supply voltage, in other words, 8 volts, it was the end of the timing cycle. Discharge pin opened, so then the capacitor could um, dump its charge through pin 7 via the resistance on this side. Now I think it's easier to, to see that if you look at the potential motor as being two split, uh, uh, two split resistors like so. And in fact if we go on to uh, current view or current flow view you might even see that maybe not so clear possibly at voltage levels you might be able to see the direction of the current direction of the current charging discharging charging and discharging hopefully that makes some sense <laughs>